Um, one in the, the, the last game, Adrian Reed, uh, uh, he's a pretty exciting youngster, uh, ready and gunning to go. So I mean, and you'll be seeing him this evening, and you can look forward for getting things from him in the seasons to come. It's not the end of the road, we just have to continue to fight. I mean, Cavaliers are, Cavaliers are ambitious, so we just have to just continue on the right path, keep our heads high and just know we have a next. Do it, do it step by step. In terms of you as a player, tell the viewers uh, your position and your strength. Well, I'm a central midfielder and my strength is to just my, well, my strength is tackling and helping my team throughout the whole match. Player to watch, Dwayne Atkinson, and finished the season very well. Scored a cracker in the last game against Dumble Holden. Six goals on the season for him in his 12-goal Premier League career. Dwayne Atkinson, just at 20 years of age, and he'll be working from that left-hand side, cutting in. Look out for him in that forward position for Cavalier. And really an exciting talent. He'll be wearing the number 10, the former Casey star, Busy Atkinson. And he'll be coming up against a formidable Waterhouse team. Let's hear what their coaching staff had to say. Daniel Bent was there. Last time we spoke, you were confident that you'd be in the final. So I know this is not the game you want to play. Uh, but talk to me, how difficult was it to get the guys motivated for this one? And what's the mood of the players like now? Um, yes, it is, it is difficult that um, we're not in the grand finale. Um, because we really wanted to, to come back and prove ourselves. Three years in the finals, not winning. We wanted to make this year that year that we won. But uh, it was unfortunate that we lost to Aberview. But the players are still hope beat. Third place, still up four. Uh, still a game to play, and we're looking forward to it. In terms of the, the third place playoff here, I know it's an opportunity many coaches use to get some players some game time. Are we to expect a lot of changes today? Well, uh, you have to wait and see, you know, uh, we don't want to give anything away, but uh, we want to keep it interesting, but we, op we hopefully we want the game to be one that is worthy of a final, because uh, I spoke to Everdeen and we said, hey, let us make this one very exciting, so we're looking forward to it. You, you spoke about three years in the running that Waterhouse was expected to win it, yeah. and it didn't happen. Uh, what are the things that you feel that didn't go well this season, and what are you looking to add to it next season to make sure that it is a better one? Well, um, they say football is a, is a game of ups and downs. Um, we as Waterhouse, so we, we, have, we, have, we have had our challenges. Um, but the players, at times, sometimes a, a player form might go up, sometimes it might dip. Um, and, and I think in the semi-finals, the semi-final legs, our big players did not turn up, so to speak. And it probably cost us. But nevertheless, all in all, we, we, we're still the best attacking team, best defensive team. Um, unfortunately, we, it, it has not brought us to the grand finale. Next year, uh, we'll get a, a number nine, because we need a number nine, as, as, as you see. Um, and then we can come back stronger. I really want to win because in the semi-final we didn't get what we wanted so we are looking forward to this one. I, I mean you, you're a Manning Cup winner yourself, I mean how disappointing has it been for you not being in the final? Very disappointed, wanted to win this one, just coming out of the Manning Cup, winning the Manning Cup Oliver Shield. So I wanted to win the Premier League as well. Well, one of the players that won't be changed is Cardell Benbo. He's our player to watch today. And easily his best season in the Premier League, which he's been playing since 2014. Cardell Benbo, 11 goals and 3 assists on the season. The former St. George's standout played football in Finland and the USL as well. In their second leg, second tier of American football. He's a big deal for Waterhouse today if they're going to lift that third place trophy. Let's see what he comes with, Cardell Bembo. We go to a break when we come back. The starting lineups and kick off. Third place playoff, Cavalier versus Waterhouse.
Welcome back to Sabina Park, Kingston, Jamaica. Cavalier versus Waterhouse, the third place playoff in the Jamaica Premier League. It's the final day of action in the 2022 competition. Chris Taylor here with you still and Dwight Jeremiah by my side. And Waterhouse finishing the Premier League on top of the standings and as you said in your interviews Dwight it must be hard to get yourself motiv motivated after that loss in the semi-finals. I mean they were easily the most consistent team throughout the regular rounds and sat at the top of the table longer than any other team so one would have expected them to win it. This is the third year in a row that you would have expected Waterhouse to win it. They fall short yet again so hugely disappointed I know it is for them. For Cavalier they would have loved to defend their title up to the very last game. That's not the case but what what we saw of them in that second leg of the semi-finals if they bring that here today then certainly Waterhouse will have a very bit tough task of even finishing third yeah that match was exciting wasn't it a seven goal thriller but this Waterhouse team they have done the double over Cavalier so far this season is it a case that Cavalier can stem the tide <laughs> they conceded what some six goals six goals over the two games um waterhouse have scored well two of the goals scored in the first legs are not with uh, waterhouse anymore which is Andre Fletcher, Fletcher and Stewart but Sh who, Chevron Stewart both yeah. at Mount Pleasant <laughs> exactly and that didn't help them to get to uh, the semi the finals Mount Pleasant or even the semi-finals but yeah uh, waterhouse will be confident because they did the double over uh Cavalier in the regular round but Cavalier will be quick to point out history plays nothing on the day of the game and it's all about who wants it more and who's motivated more especially given the scheme of things the fans are coming in slowly but surely as we can see it will be a slow start considering it's a third place playoff not everyone excited necessarily for that kind of game but it's, it's an opportunity for both these teams to finish the season on a high even though they would have been demotivated in f from, the f from the standpoint that they lost. Yeah, as a coach, you always want to finish the season well because it sort of acts as a catalyst for the upcoming season. And, and for Cavalier, they look at some players. We, we see Waterhouse here giving some players some time out there to see what they have because they'd like to know what they look like in a competitive game going into the off-season and know what they need to do. Well, we're getting ready for the start of this one as the officials are ready to go as well. The teams will march out. Cavalier versus Waterhouse. In the preliminary round, Waterhouse did a double over Cavalier, a 3-0 victory initially, and then a 3-2 in the return leg. Cardell Benbow, he's been pivotal to Waterhouse's success this season. 11 goals, double digits for the first time in his career. Cardell Benbow, and an exciting end for Cavalier, even though they couldn't get the job done from the penalty spot against Dumble Holding. Yeah, it, the goalkeeper came up big for them in the, the playoff section in the semi-finals. Just couldn't do it for them, Barclay. But he has been a decent goalkeeper throughout. I remember him back-to-back -back man of the match in regular round. Um, he has a way to go, only 22 years old. Kimar Foster there, a lead in the way in terms of goalkeepers in the Premier League this season. He has nine clean sheets and 38 saves, Kimar Foster. But unfortunately, his team couldn't get it done when it counted. New captains for today, Vino Barclay has a captain's armband for Cavalier and Ricardo Thomas, the captain's armband for Waterhouse. Let's hear what the officials have to say. Tyrone Robinson, Princess Brown, Alonzo Bennett and fourth official Nerissa Golson in charge of this one. Tyrone Robinson was out of the Premier League for quite some time. He was overseas on duties and he's back now. And a good moment this for him and the rest of the quartet. Well, this is a Cavalier team shaping up today. Vina Barclay, the St. Lucian goalkeeper. And he'll be between the sticks. Let's have a look at the starting lineup. Vina Barclay in goal, Kenroy Campbell, Colin Anderson. Kimani Gibbons scored his first goal in the Premier League last time out. Giovanni Leng is back into the starting lineup. Gadiel Irvin, Dwayne Busy Atkinson, Melvin Doxley, the other St. Lucian. Nikoshe Murray comes back into the starting lineup. Richard King and Adrian Reed gets a start in place, of course, technical director Rudolf Speed. Yeah, and they're playing their customary 3 4 3 formation, and we're hoping that they will be as fluent as they were the last time out. 
Yeah, that's the Waterhouse team doing their team photo. This is how they will line up. Kimar Foster between the sticks. Cardell Benbow, Ricardo Thomas, Damian Bins, Devroy Gray, Keithy Simpson, the experienced midfielder, Elvis Wilson. Devonte Walker comes into the starting lineup. So too does Devon Dunkley. Kimani Campbell at left back, who's been a standout, and Shaquille Bradford in their regular number nine position. They are coached by assistant coach Damian Gordon today with the absence of Marcel Gale. Yeah, and they play their customary 4 4 2 formation, and Benbo will want to get more than. If he gets a hat trick, then he's leading the goal scoring tally. Uh, Devonta Walker, just a 19 year old, playing in the attacking midfield position. Jamaica Premier League powered by Digicel. Cavalier versus Waterhouse, the third place playoff. And as we mentioned, the absence of Marcel Gill. We'll come back to that a little more as we get ready. But what an absence he has been and a major thing for Waterhouse. Very disappointing that he was not able to be here. Tyrone Robinson is ready. And we're off. Waterhouse in the blue and white. Cavalier, white top with black shorts. And as I, as I said, Dwight Jeremiah, the, the absence of Marcel Gill at a critical point in the season for Waterhouse could have been the determining factor at the end of it all. Well, you know, he took the responsibility and who wouldn't give him the opportunity to to coach a national team and they did very well, just missed out a very, by some say the narrowest of margin, just by a goal to nil in getting into the under 20 World Cup. Uh, so yeah, he, he would feel pleased that he, he did a good job and he went to serve his country. He would have felt that he had persons in his coaching staff that was able to carry it over the line that's not to be i don't think he'll think that they've done a very bad job i'm sure he would have been in contact with them nonetheless <laughs> a double whammy for waterhouse there is damian gordon his able assistant must have been disappointed that he couldn't carry them over the line in the semi-final against harborview but no doubt he'd want to finish as high up as possible with this waterhouse team it's, it's always difficult and like Ben said in the interview, it was difficult to get the boys up for this one because it was so disappointed not to be in the finals. It's he a slow that they're in a good mood now. Yeah. It's a slow start so far in the first couple of minutes. Richard King with it who scored a blinder in the semi-final. Richard King with his left foot from about 20 yards out into the far corner. And three on the season for him. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough. No, it was one of many blinders on that night. Chris, seven goals, three goals. Green Atkinson challenging, and it's just a very slow play and pace to start things out. No surprise. No, a game like this, you, 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 you as a spectator or a commentator, you, you, you beg for a early goal. And that sort of gives you a nice little catalyst for things to get bubbly. So. I wonder if Cavalier will say that they treated us in the semi-finals to that seven-goal thriller, so don't get greedy. As we see Giovanni Leng on it, who lost his starting place in the second leg of the semi-final. He's back in today. And then you did, they, they won that second leg, four to three. Yeah, forced the extra time and, and then the penalty shootout, which uncharacteristically, it was poor from a Cavalier perspective. They have been good in their last few penalty shootouts. They won the title last season on a penalty shootout. They got by Arnett Gardens in the quarterfinal. There is David Layla, the assistant coach of Cavalier. Also the head coach of Calabar High School in the high school leagues. A lot of these coaches showing their expertise at, at the different levels of Jamaican football. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, here I am doing commentary I'm like, I'm like, I'm a as well. Not <laughs> <well. laughs> William did, right, like Jeremiah, who did very well this year under the Costa Cup. Yeah, I got to the course. Here is Shaquille Bradford, who last season was the leading goal scorer, joint leading goal scorer, six goals. Here's everybody in Scarlet, the assistant, or one of the assistant coaches of Cavalier, Shaquille Bradford. Five goals this season to match it, well, not to match, but one shot of the six he scored in an abridged season, 2021. I think he had a late start to the season because he was away on overseas export trying to... Brian Benbow with a shot inside the box. And it was blocked. A chance for Cavalier to come forward, doing busy Atkinson on it. And we know how he likes open play in terms of attacking the defence line of the opposition, but... Well broken up, Damian Bins overlapping. Here is he with here he is with it on the left foot. Across to Bradford. Bradford in the box looks to cut it 
Park and it was broken up. Yeah, I was looking for Benbo, but Benbo had continued his run. Uh, there was no player who... Offside flag comes up as Kenroy Campbell was looking to free Dwayne Atkinson. And so Bennett says, not so fast. And water has come again. An increased tempo now in the last couple of minutes, which is kind of what we want to see. Yeah, most definitely. I think a few goal mode activities, you know, pretty much has caused the players to sort of lift their, their tempo. You can imagine what a goal would do. Nice one-two between Bradford and Devroy Gray. Broken up for the time being by Richard King. Been a standout player, Richard King, for Cavalier. And has looked good in the national colours as well. Such a young player in the centre back role, versatile ball handler and central defender. Yeah, I, I give him top marks. I, I, I am a coach that likes defenders who are good ball handlers and he can carry it well, he can make good passes and has height, good reading of the game, and no wonder he got a call up to the national setup. Gadel Irving here picked up his first assist of the season in the last game. He's Playing the left hand side, I think talented left foot, the Cavalier number 12. And not only this, he's got a goal as well. Did he? No, actually, he didn't in the semi final. Oh, it was. Oh, he actually the provided a goal provided for Kimani goal. Gibbons. Yes. But he does have one goal on the season, Gadiel Irving, to go with that assist. Cavalier, Cavalier have been known to us like to sit back and pull the opposition out maybe even tire the centre forwards in terms of constant running and then use the pace they have up front there's no Ronaldo Webster today so probably he's been used off the bench as an impact player but as you said Irving wide and, and, and Atkinson of course as Kitty Simpson comes forward as for Cardell Benbow pass inside <laughs> well, Richard King just blocks the advancing Kimani Campbell who was you might say was a bit out of position in advance I don't think the defender there is nothing doing there because he just stood his ground coming across corner to Waterhouse to be taken by Benbo attacking the area look like Kimani Gibbons with the ball away yeah comes back to Benbo Benbo looking to get it in and it just comes out to Gibbons Manny Campbell looking to come forward, a shot, and it's out for another corner. No Donada Thomas today for Waterhouse, one of their impact players so far this season, and their captain, regular captain, Ramon Howell, is not in the squad. Well, Ramon Howell, I see in the, well, not in the squad, you're right, and, um, no, Thomas, you're right. It's, it's, it's as I said, a lot of teams at times tend to use these games to look at other players or give other players opportunities. Baines comes forward, Baines overlapping. Strong on the left side, good ball into the box, well handled by Barclay. Who's had such an improved season for Cavalier when he came from St. Lucia. Certainly struggled in terms of his footwork, Vino Barclay, but he's improved a lot Waterhouse continue to come forward and then this is going to be too deep and over the bar and we look at the approach of, of Cavalier as you said sitting back and, 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 and trying to to pull teams to just draw them in and then hit them on the counter play well through transition I mean it has brought them success because like I said last season when they won it they went a long time without conceded I would think 461 minutes but when you look at what they did in their last game with so much young vibrant attacking players you beg to wonder um, and especially in a game like this this third and fourth playoff would love to see them just go at it Cavalier who host team only conceded 18 so very difficult to break down these two teams well you wouldn't tell in the semi-final where they're rolling in the in the four three to Cavalier but yeah in the first leg for sure you know and it was only a goal to nil to Dumbo Holden they, they made it difficult for Dumbo Holden you know it's just that I felt that that Cavalier style of play they came up against the best team in the league that I feel was best equipped to deal with a low block 
uh, that the midfield they have and the passing range they have and all the way they play. All over the top by King, easily handled by Kimar Foster, another man who's had an outstanding season for Waterhouse. As young Adrian Reed, who is in the starting lineup today. St. George's player as well was overseas in the schoolboy season then joined St. George's late and was a standout player for them even though St. George's didn't have a good season yeah and he has football in uh, in his in his blood as his father would have played locally as well basically pass it again Warren. and also Waterhouse as well Adrian Reed Senior yes yeah Tempo has dropped again. I somewhat questioned the leaving out of Giovanni Ling in the second leg of the semi-final because he was a regular partner all season for Richard King and they were arguably the best pairing in the Premier League. And that's a good sign considering they're only 20 years of age, each of them. But they left out Ling, as we see J.D. White, the reserve keeper, and the rest of the Cavalier bench. But was it to their detriment? They conceded three goals in that game and there was especially that second goal for Tafaroy Bygrave that probably better marking would have prevented that. And yeah. The decision was just that they, they felt that another pairing was, was beneficial. Well, they say, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. so I guess we can sit here and say, well, you probably say, well, only after the fact you'd say that. But yeah, I think the end result would suggest that um, maybe you'd say, okay, they got it wrong because they won the game, yes, but conceded one goal too many in the end that took them to the penalty spot and, and, and they missed out there. But yeah, you have a pairing like that. I, I don't know um, if it was a case of any knock he was carrying they didn't feel he was 100 percent a lot of times as coaches and i speak from a coaching standpoint sometimes you do you make your decision but a lot of things goes on behind the scene for you to try and come up with that decision you know foresight is very difficult as they say in hindsight 2020 so you know in the end they're here playing for the third place of course the captain kyle ming is missing for cavalier today he's been top player in the central of their defense as well as well sometimes plays the right back role kyle ming in terms of their advance to the semi-final round he was excellent even a man of the match performance as well yeah i think um, just in that first leg though it was at fault i think against not picking up. Gardens. yeah and then i, I think against um, no, sorry, McGregor scoring was more Dumb pleasant uh -huh. and also Dumbe Holden in that game i think you know didn't pick up McGregor on the header i think Cavalier looking to come forward Gadiel Irving on this left flank Side to Atkinson. Atkinson, very tricky player. Feel the Cavaliers first. Yeah, and he got it through the legs there. Nice little play from Atkinson. Uh, he has been tracked all the time. He makes the run. Has been tracked by Ricardo Thomas, who did a good job on him early in the game. But there, Atkinson won that battle, putting it between the legs, as they say, a salad in Jamaica, and then playing that one-two link up cross didn't go to his intended destination but he has a second opportunity to get it into the danger zone yeah he'll be taking the corner for Cavalier oh, not the best go. though and it's out for a goal kick so just as we expected the difficulty in terms of lifting themselves for for this type of game but we hope we hope it gets better as the game looking to come forward on this occasion uh, Devroy Gray and it's out for yet another corner to Waterhouse there's Devroy Gray not the best season for Dave Roy Gray's best season actually four goals when he was at Tivoli Gardens and three on the season for the Waterhouse number 28 Kimani Campbell to take the corner well we did hear Ben said they were out looking for a number nine 
So maybe on the back of Green not having a good season, but they still managed to be top scorers in the regular round. I was a bit surprised to hear them say that, considering... I mean, I could understand them saying that before Shaquille Bradford came in, as there's a ball put into the box yet again. Opportunity for Keithy Simpson. And they head off target. Not often nowadays, Keithy Simpson gets forward. Played football all over the Caribbean in Trinidad for a while. He also played in Finland, Keithy Simpson. 32 years of age, just off the mark. He scored 20 goals in his Premier League career, Keithy Simpson, including two this season. Of the time he's been that was a little bit lackadaisical there from Nicochet Murray and luckily for him and fall well to Shaquille Bradford. Yeah, I was a bit surprised that, that he would have said that considering that when Shaquille Bradford came in, he actually looked like he was fit for the role when he sought out his fitness and injury was after coming from overseas. As we see Cavalier having the majority of the possession, which is a bit of a surprise because Waterhouse have been certainly the better team going forward thus far. 47%. The one thing we can see, I think, Waterhouse is look more threatening with their possession. Nicochet Murray in the middle of the park, Rudolph Sweet did say he loves when Nicochet Murray is in the starting lineup for Cavalier because of how well he reads the game as a defensive midfielder. That being said, he was left out in the second leg as well. So I guess he doesn't love him enough. He pulled, he, he pulled a surprise. Nice ball forward. Benbo has speed. It actually, it wasn't Benbo, it was Devroy Gray. And he's out for yet another corner. Fourth now for Waterhouse. All have come from the same side. I think he did well there, stuck with Gray. I didn't lunge himself to make a challenge because it was the right side of, 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 of the goal, it was goal side. And he was ready to block any attempt from Gray. As he said, there's the shepherd in him to that goal line. Well, they're going for the in swinger with Cardell Benbo this time instead of Kimani Campbell. And again, it's not the best delivery. Comes out to Benbo again. Dangerous from this kind of angle. Benbo cuts inside the box with the left foot. And well, what an opportunity that was. And over the bar, well saved by Vino Barclay. The tip in Bradford. We got that one off, was it? No, it actually looks like it was Walker. Good cutback by Benbo. Came off the foot of yeah. Melvin Doxley, and that's a top Walker. save by Vino Barclay. Yeah, Bradford was just to walk away. Strike right. probably would have hit the cross by hard. Vino Barclay not gotten a touch anyhow. Corner again from Benbo. And again, it's not the best. And out for a goal kick. It was a good move from Ben Badeau, just a drop of the shoulder, drop of the, 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 the right shoulder, then he went left, just blew by the defender and then went to the, 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 the goal line, looked for the cutback which is always uh, on once you, you, you carry the ball to that goal line because defenders tend to get in line with that ball and there's always the prospect or the opportunity to cut it back and he did so but what house couldn't capitalise. What an opportunity for Devon to walk after being brought into the starting lineup here for Waterhouse. Good exposure for him and it was a good attempt. Kicked it one time, but the kind of season that the St. Lucian has had, Vino Barclay, he wasn't going to allow that below the post. Kimani Gibbons, the Mr. Utility for this Cavalier team. It's a cross. Wow, Kemar Foster putting himself in an awkward position. It's a Charles Watkinson. And the recovery there was excellent. It was that Keith Simpson, I think, who got right in the thick of things. Not sure what Kemar Foster was thinking. And he hasn't made many mistakes this season, but this was one. Yeah, he felt he would have just taken that in the chest and just have it in his in his, in his possession. Atkinson there was looking to spear his blushes with that miss there, just asking referee Robinson if that's not a deflection. But I think he got all 
got all the ball there, Atkinson. He's under the pressure. Yeah, under pressure. Simpson, and that's what threw him off. But he still expected a play of his quality still to at least hit the target had he done so there then. It would have been a goal up. Credit to Keith Simpson though, who made it very difficult. We just have picked him up in his peripheral vision. Peripheral vision between Atkinson and probably made him take his eye off the ball at the last moment. You always want your defenders to do that just to get the attacker to think about something other than putting the ball in the back of the net and sometimes that's just enough to get them to miss and that occasion uh, it was. Kamara Foster will say thanks a million for that. That would have been an embarrassing moment for him. He's come a to come forward again. Damian Baines he's been busy in the action so far both in attack and defence. Player who was out for quite a bit of the season to a dislocated, is it that what you call eye socket? Yes, it's certainly so. Strange injury to have. And Beans was out for, for quite some time. Had to work his, set his way back into the starting lineup for Waterhouse because they were doing so well. Malik Cockins had taken this position and was having a pretty good season as Waterhouse continued to come forward. Richard King is there yet again. Now Dunkley. Nice one. Time pass out to Benbo. Benbo with the shot and well, taps it down and luckily for him he recovers in time. And the quick release. He always looking to get Atkinson going once he has the ball in his possession from open play. Bartlett. Thomas. And that's Thomas's strength there. You always look to, to, to play the link up. One touch, two touch, Thomas. That Agree, gets shut down again. Well played by Elvis Wilson this time. Cover there, break it up. Yeah, that will be a whistle on the play. Foul on Ricardo Thomas. By Nikashe Murray, former Woolmers and Jamaica College standout, Nikashe Murray. Yeah, I think they just got there ahead of him, just poked it away from Murray. Yeah, just got there and poked it away. Murray was very late. Here is Benbo, leading goal scorer for Waterhouse this season, driving forward. Nice idea. Pass probably a little bit too heavy for Walker. He's out for a goal kick. Third place playoff in the Jamaica Premier League 2022. And nil all after almost 22 minutes. And again, a wasted pass. And Waterhouse bring it away. Step overs by Dunkley and he's fouled by Irving. Yeah, Dunkley recognised that he got the, the break away but didn't trust himself in terms of running running away from a Cavalier midfield and, and as such just checked his progress and was waiting for support to come. Didn't come in time, but was quite clever in enjoying the con contact and, and getting that free kick. only the pace of the game not up to a high level but also the standard here today I mean the good thing I can say though is that throughout the entirety of the, the, the Jamaica Premier League has been a really good standard this season yeah it's been good to watch for the most part and we've had some thrilling games as well another example of Illustrating that is the fact that we've had quite a few of our JPL players getting into the National Reggae Boys team as well. And yeah. doing well. And, and do, yeah. doing well, yeah. yeah. So they don't look out of place. Part. You know, that's the important part. Not just to say they get a call because some people say, okay, it's just being favoured favored for that position. But when they go on the international stage, nice pass. Put out wide and Kimani Gibbons just can't get it in. The fact that they don't look out of place tells you that it was the right decision to include them and the fact that the league here is preparing them well for that level. Because of course they would have rubbed shoulders with the overseas based players whether in, in Europe or in the MLS as well and as I said more times than not they have done well enough. So 
JPL continues to grow in terms of quality and exposure. Shows what playing football on good surfaces can do as well. Yeah, not many better than Sabina Park as we see the through ball which is yeah, a little off key and Kemar Foster will collect well and easily. Yeah, we, we talk about the good surface all the time. I mean, a lot of persons would want to see the football return to the community. So we know how important that is as well. But, you know, there have to be a, an effort to try and get these surfaces across the country to good level, top level, because it is a major recipe in playing good football. Yeah. Is it a situation, Dwight, where maybe the GFF need to look at things and say, well, you know, maybe we need to earmark, say, two fields a year. I mean, obviously, you will have six to eight fields that you might have looked at, but sometimes I think we're guilty of trying to fix everything at one time instead of saying, well, let us have maybe a five-year plan to improve the infrastructure, especially with the fields, and say we take one or two fields a year. And over a three-year period, that would mean you'll have six fields that are up to scratch, which is a good sign that you could then play all throughout the island. Anyhow, ball out wide now to Atkinson. Did pick up a ball similar in a similar position in the semi-final and let fly. This time he's well tackled though by Elvis Wilson. If he what I would have done there, Omar could have seen that goal and ensured that he doesn't have the space and time to cut inside. But on the on the on the topic of the field, um, yeah, and a lot of the clubs too uh, can do more in terms of their surface. We give. And it got us a lot of credit. We saw games being played there and, and stood up to the traffic. So they did a lot of work in the downtime. Gibbons driving forward, looking for the shoe ball. It's cut out by Waterhouse. Now Kenroy Campbell, one of those players who got experience playing for the reggae boys. Nice ball inside the box. Dealt with temporarily by Waterhouse. It comes to Irvin. Irvin. The swinging ball into the box. Kenroy Campbell is at the back post. The score three already this season. And that is just wide from Kenroy Campbell. Allowed maybe a little bit too much space on his talented left foot. And Kemar Foster will be glad to see that dribble wide. Yeah, Kenroy Campbell looking for his fourth of the season. But yeah, a couple of flick on there. One from Cavalier and then Waterhouse. And his eyes lit up there because he got a little, like, an extra yard of space there. And he let fly. But I think might have been safe on the line. The defender had positioned himself there. There was a deflection, so it's out for a corner. To Cavalier and Elvis Wilson was at the far post guarding it in case Reed with the ball into the box and that would be too easy for Kemar Foster. The corner so far in the first 27 minutes or so haven't been good from either team. Bradford was interested for a moment there but always curling away from him and running away from him as well. I actually think he's pretty good in that number nine role, Shaquille Bradford. Based on the fact that he's only played some of the season, was your leading goal scorer last year with six. Now, this season has five in that area, 13 in his young Premier League career. And I agree that you'd probably want options, but I think Bradford has one of them. I think he's good enough for the level. Yeah, I guess when you speak about that number nine, probably an experienced one. To, to partner him, yes. Poor pass by Benbo on that occasion. From Sunika Shemore, the tempo, tempo has dropped yet again. We saw eight goals amassed in two games between these two teams in the season. We were hoping that that is a sign that we'll see quite a few here this afternoon. Yeah, I don't think we're, ever going, to, we're going to get to that, especially <laughs> because of what is at stake and the fact that both these two teams, I think, are still smarting from the fact that they're, they didn't make the final and they're trying to pull themselves up to really put on a performance today. But on their day, when these two teams go all out attack, definitely 
you can see a repeat of of it goes a victory here today which team do you think it would mean more to I think for for for, for Cavalier they're a young team and the fact that they're, they're the defending champions yes they'd say well we won it last year and we did fare well enough to, to, to almost get there to defend it Gibbons into the box he should have been looking for Campbell but it was a little bit inaccurate comes to Irving yeah they certainly have done their homework not allowing Atkinson in his space Ricardo Thomas now tries forward he also was in the reggae boys team as a wing back Ricardo Thomas now to Benbow Benbow shot blocked by Richard King he's been in the right place at the right time so far in the half an hour play so as I was saying yeah Cavalier I feel would feel please you know we, we were champions we're third so it shows a, a fair deal of consistency that you're at the busy end of the season doing what you're supposed to do if you're a team on the rise for Waterhouse as we see and Cavalier were fifth at the end of the preliminary round so the fact that they would have ended up third exactly improvement a Waterhouse I don't think anything suffice for not being in the finals to try and win it again so I considering mean, three times in the finals in the last three years and losing yeah exactly so, so um, yeah well two out of three maybe that the one of the year was what if you're talking about a completed season yeah see what you're saying but yeah definitely disappointing for them and they have to find that formula to get them over the line um, third and place would be to be a consolation for them but I don't think it really <laughs> I, I, I tend to agree with you there I think for Cavalier they have had a, a in an old season even though they did finish fifth they have had some disappointing performances especially for a defending champion as we see Adrian Reed looking to get in on the Akisa Simpson is there again poor pass it comes to Kenroy Campbell no surprise that he's going to go onto the left foot and it's well blocked by Wilson before it could get to Foster Carter Thomas with a cross field ball which was pretty risky and inaccurate as well but yeah, hard to replace, finishing top of the pile, best offensive team, best defensive team. And, and then you have with the, number, the, 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 yeah. the, the, the most clean sheets as more well. clean sheets, more saves, and you're not in the final competing for the title. So yeah, I think Waterhouse will be deflated. We haven't seen that fully so far. They still look hungry for a result here. But probably, yeah, might mean more to Cavalier. Let's see. King again doing very well. It's about the third or fourth time we've seen him in one-on-one -on -one situation. I don't think he has lost a duel in this encounter so far. Elvin Doxley with the cross-field ball to Irving, but too much weight on it. Out for a throw. Important to note that there will be no extra time in the third and fourth playoff. If they're all square after 90 minutes, it's straight penalties. Well, I hope even if they're square, then it would have been square with goals. So <laughs> I'm still hopeful of it. Um, 33 minutes gone, but we've seen games. As we've always heard the cliche in football game of two half. This one isn't finished yet, but you know, we, there's still time for this game to really explode into life. Yeah, not many games that Waterhouse would go into or would end without scoring. Only three times it has happened all season. Yeah, it talks about their attacking prowess and, like I said, most goals scored in the league. So you expect them when they play goals to be scored. Mind you, they Even don't, if they they don't win. They, yeah, and they don't normally trill you anyway. So, I mean, it's up there early now. Waterhouse, you, you think you have the measure of them in games. That's how they've been this season. And then, bam, they pop up with a goal. And they, most persons say not attractive but efficient and that's how they've been this season it just didn't carry them over the line and can't say that enough and, and, and as we said it, it must be considered that without their head coach even though Damian Gordon and company are, are reliable assistants that there's a certain drive there's a certain focus that comes when your head coach is around and I'm wondering if that's something that needs to be looked at from a league perspective and even from the mother body at the GFF, there's a whistle on the play. It's a strong whistle from Tyrone Robinson, and we're going to see the first yellow card of the afternoon. I figure it's going to be to Adrian Reed. Youngster, 19, is it? And 
late on the Over challenge. Teach. Yeah, 25. He has on Adrian Reed. He doesn't want to get up and face the card. <laughs> it's Kimani Campbell who is down. Another Georgian. Both of them attended St. George's or attend St. George's. And the yellow card to Adrian Reed, the younger of the two. Here it is, and yeah, that was a bit high. I think it was malicious from Reed, but the studs were exposed just over the ankle, and that's yeah, that would be painful for Campbell. On his stronger left side. Nil all after almost 35 minutes, the third place playoff. Jamaica Premier League 2022, powered by Digicel. Of course, if you're watching, don't go anywhere. At 6 p.m., it's the final between Dumble Holding and Harbour View, four time winners of the Jamaica Premier League. Yeah, so that challenge was quite strong. Here we see some of the Harbour View team there, Johnny Talbot, Phil and Lawrence Relax. and company. Relaxing and getting themselves in the right frame of mind for what is to come later. Donald I did say Adrian Fowley Reed Stewart. was um, 19, he's 15 years old, Adrian Reed. Yeah, and there we see some of the Harbour View team and the crowd as well. They're piling in, we see the ever present Waterhouse supporters in the blue and yellow. And we expect a, a jump up crowd as the afternoon goes into evening with the anticipation of the final and we expect it to be a cracker have a view on Dumble Holding. Dumble Holding first time getting so far in the competition even though they have players with Premier League winning experience quite a few the irony of the situation is have a view have won four titles none in their starting lineup have ever won the Premier League yeah, but I, I can tell or you that your the, squad list, I should say. The culture is important and, and, and you find that some teams, they do well because once they get into that dressing room, um, though they, they've never won it before, that culture is passed on to them by those who are in there. And you look at the, the, the coaching staff for Harbour View, past players as well, so they carry on that tradition and Charles culture. Fraser, you are alluding to. <laughs> Especially. Yes, yes. Donald Foley, Stewart, who would have played national football for the reggae boys as well. We saw him in the shot a short while ago. Player down again. It's Reed. He's been in the thick of things in the last five minutes. Here he was, Adrian Reed, and a bit late there from. Origin and doing well uh, 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 at it is, is, is very encouraging. And Cavalier, we know their model won't change. And um, Stuart even spoke about him in the interview that he's an exciting one that they're really looking forward to continuing his development next season. Well, here's Dwayne Atkinson from that dangerous position, decides not to shoot, instead, he gives away the ball. Hmm. You should be surprised here that he didn't attack the box. He saw the option in front of him and, and, and knowing busy if he thinks you're in a better position at times he'll score. I think the goal he scored the other day when he dropped the shoulder in that semi-finals, I think he felt he didn't have any other option and backed himself. Maybe you should believe that more often based <laughs> on the quality of that finish. Exactly, exactly. And he did well. He's coming off um, a good Caribbean champion, championship as well. Yeah, he was in the team of the tournament, Dwayne Busy Atkinson. been a good end to the season for him in terms of his individual performances even though Cavalier are in the third and fourth playoff and is this going to be another card yeah yeah they're both great I think they're just yeah, it, really the ball had gone a long time just catching Irving very late and Tyrone Robinson produces the second yellow of the game Strikers not necessarily known for their tackling skills. <laughs> and therefore agree is true to that statement. Yeah, we see clumsy. Oh wow. Yeah, he tried it on. He wasn't high, but he was very late. Yeah, just <laughs> stood in, in his he was a week late. Yes. <laughs> Probably that challenge was for next week. <laughs> 
or the week before rather I should say. Irving will be fine. He's seen the funny side of it. Tempo of this game will suit Cavalier more, I think. They like to slow down the game. Welcome the opposition. A nice ball put into the box now. Chance here. And well, easy collection for Kemar Foster. And well, his kick wasn't the best for the time being. He's been held in by Devroy Gray. He struggled with his deliveries here at Sabina Park, Kemar Foster, as we look at, back at the chance. Took it a little bit too wide, Colin Anderson. Yeah, I think you also have to give uh, Elvis Wilson a lot of credit too in terms of the way he stuck with it and, and, and ensure that he narrowed the handle, didn't give him the opportunity to pull the trigger when he had more of the goal to aim at and it became very acute and he felt it was always going to be difficult to beat Foster from that angle. He's had his best season easily in the Premier League, Colin Anderson, seven goals. And a good end finish and with that seven goal, Cavaliers leading goal scorer. Yeah. Melvin Doxley changes the play to Kimani Gibbons who had a pretty good one as well. Dangerous ball into the box, it falls to Irving. Irving looking for room, goes to the back post and well, that's a handball from Colin Anderson. <laughs> and he's probably going to be good for that. He's well, going to be good. <laughs> and another yellow card comes out. Well, he'll tell you it's instinctive, it was just him there in the position and Paul just going away from him, felt he would have gotten his head on it and just at the last minute. Here he is going in and yeah. yeah because he was pulling away when he realized what he was doing just look at how he went and then just trying to pull the hand down didn't didn't move the hand towards the goal as well so yeah he would have been offside as well Colin Anderson had he made legal contact <laughs> but yeah he would have to improve his acting skills if he was going to get anywhere close to getting away with that that yeah. was certainly not no way close to God. the hand of God eh? <laughs> <laughs> so he goes into the book for his troubles. Third yellow card of the game. Second for a Cavalier player. Fino Barclay. Cardell Benbo finally gets one on target. Campbell. Campbell on his left side which is the strong side ball goes out for a corner and when Campbell does run at you like that it, it looks dangerous Kenroy Campbell he's a talented player you would believe that he's just 20 years of age Kenroy Campbell there we see the Harborview team coming in Colorado Murray there Timar Lewis ran Wellington and company of Shane Staple probably the most exciting right back we've seen this season with five goals you asked about the national setup <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah he hasn't been a part of it but no, I'm but sure he's I, I mean I'm one who thinks that he, he should be and, and should have been you know the, well, the man who is on the part no has that position Ricardo Thomas as we see Kenroy Campbell putting one into the box and that's way too deep no, he certainly didn't look at the wind conditions before the game, Kenroy Campbell. And that one was certainly gone with the wind. <laughs> certainly did. Nearly everything the coaching staff or both teams will do very well to just keep them in the game or keep them focused or trying to get them to lift the tempo. I don't think Part of these two teams have come out of first gear. Ben boys on side and space. This is dangerous. And look, oh, just slightly behind Keith Simpson. I think that was more for Bradford. No and communication. Then, yeah, maybe he didn't call. But yeah, and based on his reaction, he, if he had called, he would have seen it more. He would I, I be gesticulating would been, a lot more. Yeah, I wonder if it would have been slightly behind Bradford as well. Just look at this, Dwight. 
we didn't see the yeah. full replay there but but nonetheless I think it favoured Bradford more probably would have had more time uh, to to take two touches off it and not and, 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 and not being closed down from a Cavalier perspective dangerous to give Cardio Bebo that kind of space open space as well and he certainly can let you pay from that kind of range likes to cut in on the right hand side willing to kick with the left as well as we could see that delivery from him so he's had a really good season scoring wise that's going to go over the bar from Dwayne Atkinson no worries for Kemar Foster and we are approaching the end of the first half just a minute we're hearing to be added Atkinson again on that play, drifting into the offside position at the second attempt with a header. And he's gone a little bit too early. He just needs to time his run a little bit better. He has the pace. He need to go a bit too early. Yeah, there's confirmation of the minute to be added. This Cabela looked to come forward. Adrian Reed again. Does well, Reed, the 15 year old, nice ball into the box. Colin Anderson creating trouble, but well dealt with by Kimani Campbell. And Foster with the clearance. Again, it's not good. And we saw a glimpse of what is to come from this 15 year old agent Reed there with that dribble. dribble and he showed good strength as well. Here is Nikashe Murray, wide to Irving. Irving with the left foot into the box, chance, good save, finish, double save by Kemar Foster. What a save that is, it comes to Murray. Murray with the left foot. Uh, it's blocked inside the box by Ricardo Thomas. Waterhouse bring things away. Here's a tug by Doxley. He could go into the book as well. Yeah, Ben Bo upset because he wanted the advantage to be played, but I'm not sure if he was even on side at the time when that ball was played over. And the referee, I think he tried Robinson to allow the advantage to be played, and just at the moment, because the tugging started there, didn't have the whistle come, and then just as he released him, yeah, Ben Bo felt should have allowed the play to, to continue. But that's on the back of Foster keeping Waterhouse in this game with double save there, Atkinson first, and then. Anderson right on the line so that's a really good goalkeeping that's why he's been the best goalkeeper in the Premier League this season Kimar Foster and Anderson should have lifted that one over him just instinctively just looked to to knock it on the ground but then he lifted that one then it would have been a goal to a Cavalier and that's the end of the first half a low tempo one for both these sides they have had their chances none better than the Cavalier opportunity a short while ago and that man is very difficult to beat this season a double save for Kemar Foster and he ensures that after 45 minutes it's Cavalier nil Waterhouse nil
It's the final day of the Jamaica Premier League season. We are at the third and fourth playoff match here at Sabina Park and it's Cavalier versus Waterhouse. We are locked at nil all after 45 minutes. Let's have a look at the first half highlights. Tyrone Robinson in charge of this fixture. And Waterhouse coming forward. Ball into the box for Keith Simpson. And his header wide of the mark. Nothing doing. Waterhouse continuing to come forward. Cardell Benbo on the left flank. Cuts it back. And then, yeah. Nice attempt by Devontae Walker over the bar. Well saved, Vino Barclay. He's had an outstanding season at St. Lucian for Cavalier. And then this awkward moment for Kimar Foster into the box. Should have probably controlled it and cleared it in the end. It fell to Dwayne Atkinson and it was good defending by Keithy Simpson. Right place at the right time, making it difficult. Cavalier continued to come forward. This is an attempt from Kenroy Campbell looking for his fourth of the season. And it was on target, deflected wide for a corner. Then this moment into the box, Colin Anderson, very pacey forward, near leading goal scorer Cavalier, and he was well blocked out. Then Cardell Benbo looking for Shaquille Bradford, Keith Simpson didn't know and couldn't control his header. The ball was slightly behind him though from Cardell Benbo, and over the top, not often you see Keith Simpson in the attacking box. Then this moment, a double save for Kemar Foster, just before the halftime whistle. Great double save, you think that Colin Anderson should have scored there and his confidence with seven already on the season from the second attempt should have just lifted that over Foster but take nothing away from the stalwart between the sticks for Waterhouse and that was all she wrote for 45 minutes nil all in the third place playoff The first half statistics Two shots on target from five attempts for Cavalier, three on target from five for Waterhouse. We have seen some three yellow cards and there have been nine fouls between the two. Two offsides for Cavalier, two corners they have had as well. Waterhouse they have had five and they haven't made best use of the corners either team. And five saves between the two keepers, Vino uh, Bartlett with three of them. Majority of the possession for Cavalier but after 45 minutes we're all lo locked at nil. Cavalier nil, Waterhouse nil. We go to a break when we come back. Second half action in the third place playoff. JPL 2022.
We're back at the Mecca of Cricket, Sabina Park, Kingston, Jamaica. The Jamaica Premier League powered by Digicel. So football action, Cavalier nil, Waterhouse nil after 45 minutes. And the rain has started here, it's been overcast all afternoon, pretty cool here. Chris Taylor is my name, I'm still here with Dwight Jeremiah. And Dwight, we're, I'm sure, hoping for an increased tempo to the game in the second 45. As my name would suggest, a profit, but I can't prophesy this one. It has been so, <laughs> in terms of the pace of this one. Can't tell you what's going to happen, but what I hoped is for these two teams to really lift the tempo. Um, Waterhouse, we know in the regular season, did get the double over Cavalier, but they didn't look anything close like getting anything from it or going ahead in this one. It was really Cavalier who have had the better of the chance in terms of uh, goal scoring. That double save from Foster really was a difference between Cavalier leading this one. Um, but Waterhouse certainly will have to lift themselves. You know they're still smarting from that uh, loss that knocked them out of the semi-finals or, or knocked them out of the final spot. But yeah, they, they, both these two teams will have to make this a game of two halves. Yeah, well, just a light drizzle at the moment. This surface made for cricket, so the drainage excellent. So there's no worry of a waterlogged field. Speaking of the mick of cricket, West Indies are actually taking on Bangladesh at the moment. West Indies making 193 for 5 in the T20 International. Bangladesh struggling at 138 for 5 after 18.2 over. So it looks like the West Indies are going to get over the line. Rothman Powell, the Jamaican hero with 61. And Brandon King, another Jamaican with 57. Well, it's good to hear good news of the West Indies doing well. And as you say, we can mention that we're at the Mecca Cricket. Did you know, Chris, I did make my debut for Trelawney cricket team, senior cricket team playing right here at Sabina Park? I, I can't believe that. <laughs> I was a, a, a little skid on bowler, um, a lot of swing when I played, but yeah, the rain coming here. Yeah, extra overcast now. It does look a little bit promising when you look towards the east because there is quite a bit of light and it's, the clouds are breaking up somewhat. So maybe later this evening for the final we should be okay. But now, just a light drizzle and it probably will make the ball skip across the surface a lot quicker. Who do you think that would benefit more? I think the team that likes to pass it very well and you know Dumbo Holden they like to put the ball down and, and they pass it silky smooth passes when you get a greasy surface always good for that the great teams the Barcelona and stuff they always wet the pitch and allow the, 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 the grass to be a little bit greasy to allow the bar, ball to skid across yeah I agree with you read Dumbo Holden I think in this encounter though maybe with the likes of Cardell Benbo in the white eras or how, 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 how Waterhouse played do you think that the actual extra greasiness of the surface might work for the, for their to their advantage considering a cavalier like to slow it down and play very slow and cavalier they tend to look to go um direct at times and so they try to hit atkinson up the field so yeah a waterhouse will look to build up the play a lot more so in terms of these two teams for sure maybe waterhouse it would favor all right we're getting ready for second half action not much to say in the first 45 the best opportunity came in well the 45th minute for Cavalier it was a save by Kemar Foster he felt Anderson should have scored though yeah I he, think so he just needed to lift that one a little more composure I think he just rushed the shot wasn't on the direct pressure at the time and he kicked it straight to Kemar Foster a little yeah. dink over the keeper and the, the fitness it yeah, may be a part that he's our Colin player. Anderson's <laughs> game that he's to improve known for his speed and the whistle goes for the start of the second half Tyrone Robinson, the man in charge. And Waterhouse in their well-known light blue and white kit. Cavalier in their grey and black. The ball over the top by Giovanni Ling looking for Dwayne Atkinson. Like space. This could be dangerous. Good skill by Atkinson into the box. Looks to cut it back. Not sure who was lurking there, probably Adrian Reed, but didn't find comes to Reed. Melvin Duxley goes right in his way. It comes out now to Campbell on the left foot. And that's the opening goal. Ken Roy Campbell. His fourth goal of the season. And finally a goal in this fixture. Well deserved by Cavalier. They had the better of it towards the end of the first half. And no tenth clean sheet for Kemar Foster. Kenroy Campbell, lovely finish with the left boot into the far corner, Dwight. And there he showed composure, came across to him, found that he was in acre of space. Just a little ping-bonging happening there for, but once that ball came out to him, 
played out wide he just settled himself two touches and then placed it away from Foster Foster had no chance advancing but just a curler to the top corner and a smart finish from Campbell there Kenroy Campbell his fourth of the season this fixture certainly needed a goal and well Maybe against the odds, you would say it has come for Cavalier based on how the season has gone. Waterhouse doing the double over them. But yeah, they have, they ended the first half the better of the two teams, Cavalier, and they have started the second half as such. And that was a good finish. I just wonder about the Waterhouse rotation in terms of their defence. No one picking up Campbell. So much space inside the 18 yard box. And always yeah. dangerous to do. Yeah, afforded him so much time that he could take two touches before the shot. So three touches in the box and still wasn't closed down. I think the defenders just overcompensate, went in, just shifted across too much. And once he appeared on the outside, there was no Waterhouse player looking to get close enough to close him down. Yeah, way too easy for Kenroy Campbell as we see another whistle on the play. Barclay to in the semi-final round it must be said spent a lot of time on the turf struggling with groin injuries muscle strains and just refused to come off did well did brilliantly in the penalty in the first penalty shootout against Mount Pleasant I tell you what he's a tricky customer though um, he might have been injured for sure in that game but I remember interviewing him after a game where he was man of the match and I and he was going down regularly in that game as well it was up by the Captain Burrell Centre of Excellence and he he said to me I wasn't injured I was just managing the game <laughs> <laughs> but he was quite convincing in his display as well so I'm not quite sure um, I was not on call on that game I saw it yeah but from what he told me he can really act in that regard we've seen quite a few keepers do similar things and say it's part of the management of the game but yeah even from an early stage even after five minutes he was down in that game it was obvious that he so maybe had some that time. difficulty yeah um Vino Barclay helps in Lucia qualify for the Gold Cup as well his last game was a clean sheet a 3-0 victory I mean he's only 22 years old I mean they say with goalkeepers they get better as they age so a long way for him and a lot of improvement we suspect as well his opposite number Kemar Foster Another wayward pass gives it away. Cavalier continue to come forward. They have started the second half, the better of the two. Another ball put into the business area, but the slight greasiness of the surface now due to the drizzle. Just let that skip along. And go out of play. It was from Gadiel Irving. It was a good ball into the box. It was. It was. He just put it in there and just asked all of his players to just get on to the end of it. Just go ahead and gamble and see if you can get there. Um, just one player at the time that decided to gamble for it, but was decent ball. This has not been a good and there again Kimar Foster a little bit too complacent Waterhouse nearly give Cavalier another opportunity Kenroy Campbell the goal scorer coming forward looking for Reed broken up by Benbow he has had to come deep to get the scored a brilliant goal in the semi-final from this kind of range but the pass to Adrian Reed and it was well blocked. Yeah, and King, just look how high he came. He came away halfway line to Rob Gray. Here is Benbow. King is out of position. The pass quite slow to Bradford. Bradford on the right foot looking for a shooting opportunity.
The North Stand End or the Stand End, of course, Kingston Harbour behind the George Headley Stand in the distance. The Cavalier pushed. They have been kept scoreless all season. And they have played some 25 matches now. Here they are. And that pass that was a little off key from Ricardo Thomas and Benbo can't control it. Yeah, you saw what Thomas was trying to do just to, to create a decoy with that run inside. Look as if he was going to let fly with a shot. Ricardo Thomas hasn't scored this season but has three assists to his name. Waterhouse have been pretty even in terms of their goal scoring this season but the stat does favour second half goals. They have scored what 19 in the first half, 22 in the second half so fairly even, fairly even but the stat will favour them. Here What like does favour them is what you said earlier is that they, they've only failed to score in, in three games and you expect them to score when they play. So we're hoping that we'll get that goal. If things, do, if things do become square at the end of 90 minutes, we go straight to penalties. There will be no extra time in the third place playoff. There will be extra time in the final, however, if needed before the dreaded penalties. Too, that he might require to, to be substituted. He was given that universal signal. So whether or not the medics will concur with him. And when you look to the bench, you wonder who would be the change for him. Probably the likes of maybe Mario Smith, young midfielder, who you did the interview with earlier. Yeah, and he's hoping to get a game. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Last opportunity for the season, so yeah, he could be one of the players looked at, or maybe Jerome McCleary. And it, and it is actually Jerome McCleary who is being prepared. So, the number 13 for Cavalier. So, you were right, Dwight. Nikashi Murray's afternoon is over. Struggled earlier in the season with fatigue. Rudolph Speed spoke about how much he likes Nikashi Moore being in his starting lineup just because of what he brings. And yeah, is this an opportunity for Waterhouse to exploit the middle of Cavalier? He's off, Young McCleary is on. Came on in the last game as well in the semi final, second leg. Yeah, what, what they tend to do at times though is to, uh, they ask uh, Doxley to drop deep at times too and play that role. Let's see whether or not he'll be asked to do that again. Here is Dunkley. Cross field pass to Keith e. Simpson. Comes out to Ricardo Thomas. Thomas with a shot and it's over the bar. Yeah, that was ambitious from Thomas. Good keeper in, in Barclay. But certainly is confident enough to attempt that. Good skill there by Giovanni Ling on the left hand side. Loves to overlap as well. Ling would maybe get in too adventurous. Doxley has to clean up his mess and it's back to Vino Barclay. King. It's a nasty challenge by Dunkley. Reckless and well. He will see yellow as well. Devon Dunkley. 
St. George's schoolboy. He goes into the book. And making one. This is the fifth yellow of the contest. Second for a Waterhouse player. Both himself and Dev Roy Gray in the book. And yeah, that was a bit wild from Dunkley. He's grown quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, off school boy season, etc. It's just so important in their development that they get the opportunity. And if they're good players, the measure we normally do as, 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 as coaches and scouts, if a player is good enough, a young player, he should be able to compete with ages, at least two ages above his own. Ball forward, Campbell. It's off camp, so it will be a goal kick. He thinks that it should have been a corner. That's something to say to the assistant, Princess Brown. Goal kick it is again. A little bit lax at the back from Waterhouse. And, and as you said, right, just that extra energy from water was not really there just yet they're still going through the motion you can see how they are defending it's almost as if you know it's it's a whatever comes whatever happens happens yeah it's almost as like they're saying you know if we win this it's still wouldn't appease our fans they, they you know they're disappointed and like i said understandable but yes you have uh, 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 as the coach says an increase in prize money to finish high up the league so you know and the scheme of things will go a far away so players the management are hoping will just be able to lift themselves to be able to get this third place Damian Bins to take the free kick can there more be more impetus going forward for Waterhouse ball into the box finds the probably the shortest man on the pitch Cardell Benbow and he tries to head it on it's out for a goal kick yeah just an open letter there just trying to make something of it I don't think he was really trying to score just trying to keep it alive Free kick was, was poor, he couldn't salvage anything from it. It's been a good couple of seasons for Cavalier. He broke, broke a 40 year drought after winning the Premier League in 1981. Won it last year for the first time since then. And now get into the semi finals. And if things remain here, they would be third. Disappointed that they would not be able to have retain their title however it's been a good patch here and a good sign that as you said the, the young footballers doing well Harborview another team that believe in youth especially at this level and they are in the final so it's yeah. a good sign for Jamaican football yeah it is and, and to, to think as I said they'll be happy to finish third because of how their season started too for, for, for Cavalier for the first 10 games they didn't have a back-to-back -back win at that time was really struggling um, so to be here you feel and at the moment in the driver's seat to be third decent season well, we'll see a team after this Dwight who also didn't have any back-to-back -back wins in the in the early round as we see a ball put in the box half of you struggle with that they didn't in fact, they were they didn't consistently have any at all. inconsistent. Yeah, that's the consistency of the inconsistency, <laughs> if you could say that. They set up a, a pattern at one stage. Here's Benbo looking to come forward, broken up by Kenroy Campbell. He's had a good game. Now it's Colin Anderson. He loves space. He is a far way away from goal, though. Comes inside to Adrian Reed. They now slow up the play, Cavalier. Allow the Waterhouse players to get back. Irving. On the weaker right foot, and it's away by Bins. Gibbons, a goal and an assist in his last game to Doxley. Nice ball into the back post from Atkinson, and it's in the back of the net. Dwayne Atkinson, not very often you see him score with his head. His seventh of the season, now joint leading goal scorer for Cavalier. And Cavalier now with a two-goal cushion. Nice ball by Melvin Doxley. And a great cushion head up by Dwayne Atkinson. Kemar Foster beaten again. Yeah, it was really a good ball. The ball left the boot of, of, of Doxley. You knew it was a good ball before Foster was initially interested. Took a few steps out and realized it wasn't a ball that he was going to get to. And a looping header from Atkinson. Well controlled. Decent ball, you see. Foster there looking to come and then realizing nowhere near that. 
and then to the far post very well headed there from Atkinson this is his third attempt of a header two in the first half that he was offside this time stayed onside it was a slower build up and third time lucky this man I mean, Atkinson has been in good goal scoring form, seventh of the season. Cavalier are going to make another change. Adrian Reed is off. He's been struggling with injury. And Omario Henry is on. Cavalier with a two goal cushion. Dwayne Atkinson, that was a lovely finish by Dwayne Busy Atkinson. And as we said, now seven on the season. It's been a good finish for him. Yeah, joint with Colin Anderson as their leading goal scorers. Here is Waterhouse. We spoke about their miserable defending in this third place playoff and that continued. Where was the marking for Dwayne Atkinson? The right back not in position at all, which should have been what? Ricardo Thomas. I think I think the again the same thing occurred where the defense does shift too much, overcompensated in terms of going ball side and giving up the space on the far side but one thing that you can do uh, to, to, to counter that when the ball is in flight it can't be played by anyone and so the defenders needed to shift and move quickly to close down there was no urgency in doing so and Dwayne Atkinson though still had a lot to do was free to do it Waterhouse they are going to make a couple of changes of their own and why not Andre Leslie long time member of this Waterhouse team he comes on three goals on the season he replaces Devroy Gray Andre Leslie has been playing for Waterhouse since 2014 a man who scored 12 goals in his Premier League career maybe he has three what? this season yeah I'm sure Waterhouse would love him to be a little bit more consistent especially going into next season does have good games but as you said lost his starting place just because of the inconsistency there's a leading goal scorer in the JPL a Tafaroy by Grave and Javon James comes on as well here's a Tafaroy by Grave joint goal leading goal scorer with Daniel Green from Mount Pleasant with 13 we know Green can't increase his tally so he has the chance to go outright for the golden boot by Grave what a moment it will be for by Grave just based on his history as a, as a footballer and by far his best season and he's en route to Vietnam on a contract so yeah, and to think he missed last play. season pretty much into to, to, to a sense and some felt he was injured uh, but I spoke with uh, Paul Christie the manager still managed was three just, goals though yeah, he was still out of out of place in terms of the length of time he missed in last season that move he made to Antigua certainly helped him big time at Afroy by Grave in terms of gaining his confidence then he came back here joined Dumble Holding and as I said three goals in it was a, a shortened season a yes. ten, ten game season and then this season he's been nothing but brilliant for Dumble Holding one of the main reasons why they're going to be in that match at six o'clock yeah as I said you know seven o'clock eastern time started out well and then just lost his way I was told and was missing for a while and many felt he was injured but told he wasn't but you said maybe that move really helped him sort himself out and he has come back with a bang and has found an able partner in McGregor well Waterhouse they have a lot of work to do as well and they are down by two goals to nil looking to come forward is Devon Dunkley one of the players blessed with a starting place today they've just not been good defensively Waters as I said going through the motions and you hit the nail on the head Dwight that this probably meant more to Cavalier and they are showing that it's been two goals one for Kenroy Campbell his fourth of the season and one for Dwayne Busy Atkinson his seventh and they're probably looking to try and return the favour on Waterhouse who in both games in the regular season put three past them still have the opportunity to score a third and based on how Waterhouse is playing could be more than three yeah Waterhouse a 3-0 victory first time out and then 3-2 in the second encounter so Cavalier were Im improving all the time as we see Cavalier with the majority of the possession and all of the goals <laughs> but yeah so you would say from a, if you're looking at it from a Cavalier perspective 3 nil in the first love three in the first game then two three so we are getting better no leading so so the progress the progression is sure and, and you spoke about that in terms of how they started slowly as defending champions cavalier very disappointing and as the season went on they got better 
I would have speed will will, will, will will say to you that and he did say to me the last time I spoke with him in the the first leg of the semi here's another opportunity as Colin Anderson comes forward finds Dwayne Atkinson that pass is not going to make but his body was never shaped to make that pass his whole dynamics was off and you often say that to players you're not shaped for that pass so don't attempt it but guess what it's it's the, the, it's the area of the field where you tell your players take the risk Andre Leslie from some way out and it's wide of the upright easy for Vino Barclay to Andre Leslie just coming onto the park as you said three and a brace actually initially came on for Devroy Gray who Devroy Gray has actually been the super sub for Waterhouse so a bit surprised that maybe he was starting instead of coming off the bench three goes off the bench couldn't add to, to it today and there's Javon James who came on for Devonte Walker Javon James the leading assist maker believe it or not for Waterhouse nice ball played through here is Shaquille Bradford into the box for James set up hesitation and then over the bar wow that's a poor finish by Casey Simpson yeah, James got that one with his back to goal couldn't sort his feet out in time to really get a shot on target we see it here good ball and Bradford lost onto it from Benpo into the box James there just outside the, the near post as well once it laid it inside Kitty Simpson there just leaning back always going high two things that worked against Waterhouse there Javon James when you saw Bradford with the ball you have to know what you're going to do with it before you get it so position yourself to so get he was never ready for right. that he was never ready which has been a criticism of Javon James he's only scored twice this season and works very hard his work rate excellent but in terms of his finishing ability that's something he needs to brush upon he has five assists to go with that but yeah Kitty Simpson Oh, there's a shot just wide of the mark that was from some way out from Ricardo Thomas and he's been trying that all game long hasn't just scored those so far this season and Vina Barclay was a little bit concerned this time good cross field pass and as he picked it up he was going for goal good power behind it well, comfortably wide in the end I was just waiting for the ball to sit up nicely for him. You see, when he took it down, he just allowed a few bounces and just latched onto it. Didn't get on target. Keeps it in. Does for Mario Henry, but no. Let's we'll keep that in. Wayward and out for a goal kick. Third place playoff in the Jamaica Premier League, powered by Digicel. Cavalier 2, Waterhouse nil. After almost 69 minutes. A nice ball put into the box again by Bradford, but it's a bit behind his teammates. Cavalier just be a little bit careful here. No flag from Princess Brown. Colin Anderson on side. Anderson into the box and a finish! What a finish that is by Dwayne Atkinson! Oh, he's such a talented player, Dwayne Busy Atkinson. Had a really slow start to the campaign with just one goal. And he's come back with a bang. Eight goals now in the season for the Cavalier number 10. Kemar Foster beaten for the third time this afternoon. And I want to tell you three good goals here. Just coming in on that blind side, surprising the defender. And a smart, smart finish there from Atkinson. One time finish. Beautiful foot side there. Foster, no chance. No chance at all to stop that one. That was instinctive. And he was coming into the position. The ball was just served up in a position there. He was coming from the blind side. Surprised the defender. And when you're an attacker and you can surprise the defender, always good for you. You tell your strikers to do that. He knew where he wanted to go. Had a run on the defender who felt he had time and space. No time in the end. Yeah, so eight on the season now for Dwayne Atkinson and Cavalier certainly running away with this one. Well, we did ask for goals. We're getting them now. We said they were going to try and give the return the favour onto Waterhouse, who put two, three, three past them twice in the regular season. They're three nil up. I think they can go better based on how Waterhouse is playing here. And Busy Atkinson now the outright leading goal scorer for Cavalier with eight. Just going one ball. ahead of Colin Anderson. Yeah. Who provided the assist? His quality, yeah. Colin Anderson with the assist. On this occasion, his first assist of the season. Colin Anderson, what I was looking to come forward. It falls to Leslie and well, the less we say about that, the better from Andre Leslie. There's a double holding team. 
Brooks, Stefan Duar, the referee in front, and there we see Fabian McCarthy, Odin Samuels, and the rest looking to make history today. Tumble holding, Shaquille Dyer coming in as well, their captain. And there's Kimoni Bailey who scored that impressive goal in the second leg semi final. Dumbo Holden will be looking to win their first title at this level. Cavalier looking to win their third place trophy and doing a good job of it at the moment. Yeah, you'd be a brave man to bet against them at this stage. Not only because of how they're, well they're doing in the second half, but the fact that how badly Waterhouse is playing. You, you spoke a lot, Chris, about their defensive exploits today. Really been poor. And again, that ball to, 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 to Colin Anderson was played to the wide area, parallel of that 18-yard box. No one engaged him. Just so much space there. And Waterhouse employing more of like a three-at-the-back space you'd feel either side because there's certainly overcompensating when they go to protect ball side yeah we got a nice shot of the of a stands there a lot more patrons coming in a lot making the journey like you Dwight Jeremiah <laughs> from maybe the north and the west as well I don't know if any of them in the stand well a few in the stand I'm sure has, has, has made the way from Trelawney <laughs> like I did <laughs> great I know, to see I know of two yeah well supported here the Jamaica Premier League and of course the final coming up at 6 p.m. Jamaica time, 7 Eastern Caribbean, another opportunity for Cavalier, and it's in the back of the net. Poor defending yet again from Waterhouse, and it's Kenroy Campbell to Gadale Irving. Irving with his second of the season, a thumping finish past the outstretched hands of Kimar Foster. Wow, what a performance this is from Cavalier, and especially here in the second half. Cavalier 4, Waterhouse nil. Yeah, that was a thumping finish and a smart ball as well. Again, just coming centrally, then playing out wide slightly and then that finish. Yeah, Foster under the crossbar and into the back of the net. He put everything behind that one and before Foster could react, that one was rolling down and rippling the net. Yeah, there you have it. Foster hand went up when that ball was rolling down the back of the net. Good ball playing out and it rippled it and boy did he enjoy that one. Well, amazing him even himself. Cavalier are destroying this Waterhouse defence who must be said have been poor especially from the wide areas. Their wing backs does not cover it well at all. Kimani Campbell and Ricardo Thomas nowhere in sight from the wide areas. And as you said, maybe just a sign that they're not putting their full efforts into this encounter but Cavalier they want it and their finishing shows it well it may have been signed to sign that we were, we were seen before this game yes they didn't do well enough in the playoffs or in the semi-final but their last regular game of the season Arnett Gardens did put four past them that game ended 4-2 um, in favor of Arnett Gardens so maybe the signs were there yeah it was a 4-2 win for Arnett granted Waterhouse had already assured their first place finish so you might be, you might have said to yourself well they are a bit complacent nevertheless did concede four and now here but this is a team only had the best defensive record yeah 18 goals throughout the the, the 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 22 games and now four in one game as I said here is Waterhouse looking to come forward Keith Simpson nice pass out to Ricardo Thomas probably a little too hard and yeah Keith Simpson might have been better off going for goal himself I was about to say that Chris you said night pass out but I think it would have been nicer for him to go after goal Cavalier looked to come forward Kenroy Campbell again look at the amount of space for Henry here nobody in position Kimani Campbell out of position Javon James coming back to assist now out to Atkinson well, Atkinson Unusually, a bad touch. And he's out for a goal kick. So you think about it, the last game of the season, Waterhouse went down 4-2. They ended the preliminary round conceding 18 goals overall. So they really played 21 games conceding just 14. So that was impressive. How impressive. good they were, yeah. And, but on that note too, you were talking about them maybe because of the fact that they had qualified, they decided to take the foot off the gas. 
coming up for Waterhouse, making another change. Beadle coming in. Kevin and Beadle. Ricardo Thomas came on in the semi final as well. He's on for Ricardo Thomas, who has had a miserable afternoon defensively for sure. And did have a couple moments when he went forward. Yeah. And he's not impressed at all. His team, Waterhouse, have been obliterated by this Cavalier team, especially here in the second half. And the way they're playing, it seems as if they could add more. Yeah, you wouldn't bet against that. Right there, just trying to bring some consolation to Waterhouse. And to think that Benba came into this game just two goals off the leading goal scorers, you feel maybe a motivation for them to try and get him up there. Here is Campbell, finds the same Benbo. Benbo looking to cause trouble. Out to Keith Simpson. This is the most I've seen Keith Simpson in and around 18 yard box all season. Shot is blocked, it comes to Kenroy Campbell, out to Anderson, Anderson loves space and pushes it along Atkin to Dwayne Atkinson who was switch flanks, not sure what he was attempting there but it's way off target, now Benbo, Benbo forward to Bins, Bins, that must have been a shot by Bins but it could never have been a pass. They had two players in the box, I think it was James and Bradford. That ball was meant for none of them because and there was no one overlapping on the far side. Just overcooked it or as you said, would have been really ambitious to go for goal from there. That's a frustrated look on the face of assistant coach Damien Gordon. He has not had an enjoyable playoff period at all. He's been in charge with the absence of Marcel Gill due to national duties. Marcel Fuzzy Gill away with the under twenty team that didn't go well either, failed to qualify for the under twenty World Cup. And Damien Gordon has struggled with the Waterhouse team. This is Leslie, and it's off target. Barclay was out of position, but wide of the target. And yeah, when you look at the Waterhouse faces, they probably anxious for the 90 minutes to be up. Yeah, with. Uh, Bartlett was out of position with that shot. He felt it was on target, would have struggled. And when he saw the shot on leash, just looked around anxiously. Nice move here by Leslie. Just going out wide and then Beetle Beetle with the shot, but probably <laughs> looking to curl it into the far corner. I guess you'd have to have about three goals stopped on top of one another. Wrong sport here. <laughs> And Beadle. We are at a cricket ground, that certainly would have been the maximum. Fans piling in. Lovely afternoon here at Sabina Park. It's actually pretty cool because there's a nice breeze coming across the ground. It's really cool condition, good for, for, this, for football today. Waterhouse looking to come forward. Can they get a consolation at this point? Can Cardell Benbow add something to this? really good season he has had. It's his best scoring season in the JPL. And hard to believe that his best season before this was a seven goals. Anyway, the ball taken away from him. Comes to Campbell, a bit lackadaisical. Beadle wins it. And that would be a free kick. Yeah, Campbell said he got the ball, but he was coming from behind and took the took Beadle's feet from, from under him. Beadle feeling that Beadle is making the most of it. And now ball put through. Javon James looking for a third of the season. Well saved, Vino Barclay. And Waterhouse taking the kick quickly. And caught Cavalier off guard. And well, custodian Vino Barclay did very well. They continue to come forward. Now to Cardell Benbow. And should he have taken that shot with his left foot? It was a wonderful tackle by Richard King. And no joy for Waterhouse. King has been excellent this game, like I said, in open play. I don't think he has lost the duel and then putting his, himself on the line in the way they are blocking that shot. But 
Bembo was looking to open his body up to go to the far side, but there was so many body there, I think he's never going to get through. Very unwilling to use his left foot, and I don't know why Cardell Benbo, because the option was there for was, the left-footed strike. Was better. Yeah, it was better. better. He probably would have scored because I think he was very, uh, Vina Bartlett was quite exposed at that point and was anticipating the ball going to that far side. So, yeah. yeah. Yellow card, Kenroy Campbell. Another yellow card that makes it number six, it is. is. Yeah, number six for the night. Four now to Cavalier, Kenroy Campbell, the latest of them. He has a goal and an assist and a yellow card, Kenroy Campbell, so he has a full suit. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope he doesn't go up a notch with the card and go to red. Certainly a foul there, and I think probably the yellow card was more for something he said. Kenroy Campbell. He's leading by four goals to nil. You just need to keep your composure. Yeah, and he had a lot to say with the, the free kick he gave away before that. So maybe referee Robinson just want to quiet him down a little. Yeah, he's heard enough. Been setting up over this. It probably favours the left foot of him based on the angle, but I'm sure Cardell Benbo wants to make it a dozen for the season. Looks quite focused. 11 goals, 3 assists, Cardell Benbo. Guess not, it's Bins. And it's over the top. Has it scored so far this season, Damian Bins? It's never close to opening his account there. Well, the Sportsmax at moment is this. Melvin Doxley, ball to the back post. And a lovely cushion header by Dwayne Atkins. No, that was a talented finish by Dwayne Atkinson. Not an easy finish by any means. And certainly to be Kemar Foster like that, who has had such an outstanding season. That is the Sportsmax at moment. And his eighth goal of the season, Dwayne Busy Atkinson. Of course, the Sportsmax app, you can watch so many things on it, so many sports on it. You should download it now if you haven't already. And I'm sure many persons in the fan in the stands, the fans in the stands are watching it on their phone as well. He isn't. He's quite frustrated at the Waterhouse performance and the frustration continues. Yeah, that looks like a frustrated strike from Bendo. Haven't really had a few look-ins, yes. But certainly not enough being let in by his players. So really slow in terms of really building up, not really getting out ahead of steam today and out of house. Maybe the rest was too much for them, you feel? Well, as we said, it's, it's just been a struggle for Waterhouse in the playoff period. I, I think a big deal is the absence of Marcel Gale. I, I, I really believe so. I think, especially with the homegrown players that have been around a long time, Marcel Gale also homegrown has been there right throughout. And there's just an added focus and an added energy as you can appreciate when your head coach is there and I think even though the respect might be there for Damian Gordon it's just not the same and in a semi-final period and especially here you need that because the matches are tough it's the defining point of a season and I think from it's, I, I, I don't think it's, it's Gale's fault because as you said national opportunity as a coach but I think the JFF need to have their national coaches fully on staff and the Premier League coaches need to be independent and, and even sorted out well in advance as well. Maybe he knew he was going to go away. Then maybe maybe better things would have been put in place. Sometimes there's two of hazard coming. I'm not a fan of that. Anyhow, Andre Leslie coming forward. I think if you want the best out of your national teams, these coaches need to be on staff and, and, sure. and, and concentrate fully on the national team. It's not fair to Waterhouse for them to get to the semi-final point and then their head coach has to go away on national duty. And a lot of times I was saying, you know, the call, in, call up from the JFF four squads or, or camp, it's very rushed. It's never well in advance. And I'm pretty sure there's a calendar from FIFA as to dates when things are going to happen. Correct. As we see Cavalier looking to make another change. Tavar Thompson about to come on. But yeah, that is something I'm very passionate about. And I think in terms of the growth of our football, how do you know your best team if you're a coach which you've not been a part of the national setup? Then all of a sudden, as we see, yeah, he's on for Kenroy Campbell, who's probably working hard to get another yellow. So <laughs> he comes off after having a good game. But yeah. 
that how do these coaches know their best team at the national level if they're not working with them all along? They should be around scouting at the schoolboy level, seeing who the best talents are, not be concentrating on the Premier League and then all of a sudden you have to change focus at the last minute. Richard King, another battle that he wins in the box. I'm pretty much in agreement because, you know, I've been in the receiving end. Here is a strike and it's scuffed by Javon James and it falls to Vino Barclay to has life easy at the back. Mm -hmm. I said I've been on the receiving ends of calls coming in that day. We, we, we're having a camp coming up within a, a, a couple of days and we need players to come forward. It's always seemed to be a rush and a last minute thing and as such, the cohesiveness, the consistency, the improvement, not there and that has to be sorted out. So 100% in agreement with you on that. And it's also a reason why we don't seem to pick our best national junior teams because we are unaware of who are the, our best players if we are not scouting properly and watching it from a, a national coach's perspective. Anyway, Waterhouse continue to try to find a consolation. The ball is out and it's going to be a corner. I dare say some may say in some quarters when it is done that way that allow others to be able to dictate who is there. So <laughs> the coach is unable to really come up with the right set of players. I mean, uh, we have had some outstanding um, performances today in this game. Yeah, Beal is trying to probably add to that brilliant performance discussion, but his attack is thwarted here by a man who's certainly in the discussion, Dwayne Atkinson. He's had a good out in Dwight. Certainly with two goals, of course, he has to be in a discussion. Look at his skill by Dwayne Atkinson, a good ball handler. Caught on the ball, though, falls to Beadle. <laughs> well, Beadle dropped that wide. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why Atkinson need not, and he's not playing in that position so deep because he picked the ball up and was so nonchalant, casual in terms of coming out and should have played the ball out to this player. You see the ball played inside, then back to him there and just casually looking to stroll out. And a pass was on. Obviously, the man of the match would have to come from Cavalier Richard King. He's been, now he's been excellent in the defence line. Exactly. He is thwarted most of the attacks for Waterhouse. We have had Melvin Doxley with two assists. He has had a good game. You've had Dwayne Atkinson with two goals. You've also had Kenroy Campbell, who came off a short moment ago, who had a goal. The opening one was it. And he's also had an assist there in number 11. Here is Colin Anderson coming forward. Now he finds Henry wide in loads of space, Henry, but he's taken a year and a half to kick the shot and it's blocked he had so much room there and that's been a, a problem for Waterhouse this afternoon they haven't defended well from the flank areas Kimani Campbell and Ricardo Thomas have had a horror of a game defensively yeah they've just given up that that area parallel to that penalty box area and every time Cavalier plays the ball into those positions then their player gets it because they're uncontested in those areas. Too easy, just way too easy for a team that was so defensively sown throughout the regular season. Dwayne Atkinson, his second goal was what you saw as a, as a sports app, sports marks app moment. And was he's probably been a standout. Well, it was his first actually, his first, a cushion yes. header. Mm -hmm. The his second one was a good one as well. The second one was a beautiful finish, one time with the right boot. It's coming from the blind side of the defender. Yeah. Just met Very so easy well. to kick that over the bar. Yeah, we've seen that many times. Well, we're approaching 90 minutes and we expect just two minutes of stoppages and many will be say many will be saying they are thankful for that. Now that attack broke not by Richard King. I think it might come down to Richard King or, or Dwayne Atkinson. Dwight, what say you? It is your call at the end of it all. Here is Cardell Benbow. Well, like I said, Leslie looking for some space. Broken up by Doxley, who has had two assists as well in the game. Melvin Doxley. But I think he might be falling third. Yeah, I think in the end, as I said, King has had a very, very good game. But what a house they've offered very little anyway. Gadiel Irving into the box. Has a goal already, Gadiel Irving. And it's broken up here by Kimani Campbell. Comes forward. Gibbons breaks it up. And Waterhouse have it again. 
that's over hit though and it's not going to be kept in play and Waterhouse this is very much looking like it's going to be the fourth time this season that they have been denied a goal and as you said Dwight they haven't really had much going forward Vina Barclay probably made what one outstanding save but apart from that the shots have been wayward Cardell Bimbo has been off they've missed Denardo Thomas and probably their captain Ramon Hall in terms of their organization within the middle of the park I was just about to say they were disjointed throughout in terms of their performance attack midfield play build up play all of that have just been off for Waterhouse today so I'm going to go with Atkinson because also the goals despite Waterhouse being poor at the back the goals from Atkinson have been good goals no tapping and he still had a lot of work to do with both goals that ball played over from Doxley it's a cushion header and the finish the second one smart as well and they're playing a little rander here Cavalier it's something we do on the training field you know numbers up in advance you play good one touch football nice little rando and they were enjoying themselves yeah I agree with you it's a, it's a good way to end for Dwayne Atkins who's had a really good finish to the season and their leading goal scorer with eight and two brilliant finishes so yeah Dwayne Atkins is probably the best player overall especially considering Waterhouse have been the best going forward chance to break the clean sheet and they do so Waterhouse with a consolation as we said very rare for them to be denied a goal and Keith Simpson probably their most experienced player and they're most decorated as well with his exploits overseas as his third of the season Keith Simpson and his 21st of his Premier League career Cavalier 4 Waterhouse 1 well he has been in and about that area all game long Keith Simpson just in there looking for an opportunity probably would say Waterhouse most most threatening player um, throughout this game and as such he has been rewarded with a goal but it, it pretty much was gifted to, to Waterhouse by Cavalier as we can see the score there now four goals to one in favor of Cavalier but uh, Cavalier they were just playing that little rando enjoying themselves and, and that's we it have. and that's it so Cavalier are the third place team of the Jamaica Premier League 2022 they defeat Waterhouse yeah the leaders after the first round by four goals to one a brace for man of the match Dwayne Atkinson and it goes by that man Gadiel Irvin and Kenroy Campbell as well the consolation for Keith Simpson the Waterhouse 63 and we have a look at the full match highlights well this the second half highlights coming forward there broken up then the strike from Dwayne Atkinson broken up then it fell to Kenroy Campbell who would open his account Kenroy Campbell with his fourth of the season way too much space on that side poor marking by Kimani Campbell and Kenroy with the finish after 46 minutes it was Cavalier 1, Waterhouse nil. It was such a flat performance from Waterhouse, especially in the second half. Lovely ball by Melvin Doxley, the St. Lucian. And what a header that was by Dwayne Atkinson. So much skill to execute that. Cushioning the header so well and beating the ever-present Kemar Foster to the far post. That was 2-0 after 61 minutes. Cavalier, they weren't finished and yeah space on the flank for Colin Anderson to pick out Dwayne Atkinson for a second of the game his eighth of the season and this was a good finish as well by Dwayne Atkinson coming in from the blind side Kemar Foster no chance hit with so much power and that was 3-0 after 70 they weren't finished yet Cavalier pass to Gadiel Irving and what a thumping finish that was rocketed with his strong left foot raising the underneath of the crossbar and that was 4-0 uh, great finish by Gadiel Irvin he is second of the season and the fourth for Cavalier they maintain that lead until stoppage time Andre Leslie to Ruan Beadle Beadle to Keithy Simpson and Keithy Simpson with his third of the season a good finish into the far corner and Vino Barclay denied another clean sheet and 
was a good finish for the 32 year old Simpson 4-1 after 90 minutes full stands and we have a look at the match statistics 12 shots six on target for Cavalier and they managed four goals that's a great ratio five on target from 11 attempts from Waterhouse they were off their A game today 12 fouls and six yellow cards shown by Tyrone Robinson who was the man in charge of this one and three offsides for Cavalier some eight corners for Waterhouse but they didn't make them count and Vino Barclay the busier between the sticks four saves compared to Kemar Foster's two that's how clinical Cavalier were and they had the majority of the possession Cavalier and the majority of the goals Cavalier four Waterhouse one Dwight Jeremiah is with our man of the match Dwayne Atkinson our man of the match but before I ask him a few questions he will receive some goodies from Digicel um, not sure what's in the bag I'm not sure he's going to show us either not wanting to give too much away but that is it Actually, so he's, he said that is it, so maybe he's pleased no, with what is in there. No, am I good? <laughs> Dwayne, good performance from you today. Two well taken goals. Pretty much surmise you as a player. One a crafty finish, the other one bullish to run inside. Just tell me about those two goals. Well, as I can see, it's a great feeling to know that um, we're fighting for the third place, but we just keep on pushing, come out, show respect and fight, and just don't say it never ends. But it's a great feeling to know that come out and end the season with at least eight goals and come score double in the last um, matches. But it's a great feeling to me still. In terms of your goal tally, eight, you're pleased with that. You started slowly, but did you set your target to have double figures? Well, yes, I was planning to have double figures, but it didn't come. But we still fight and fight and end of the season, um, come out with eight. Um, start out pretty slow, but I guess just give God thanks for everything that they done. Well, good game from you. I mean, you continue to go from strength to strength, but thanks. Yes, Dwayne Atkinson there. Two really good goals. One a header and a smart finish with the right foot. Just surprising Foster and defender Wilson. Uh, Bent a difficult game and it proved that it was really difficult to lift the boys for this game, this third place playoff. Yeah, I mean, for, 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 from missing out from the finals, I think it's it's very difficult to, to want to play at third place. But nevertheless, they showed up, did not perform as you'd want and to, to them to do. Um, so that's, that's, I guess that's it. It's something that you have to work on nonetheless as professionals that they have to, no matter the level, you have to find a way to be able to motivate these boys. Well, I think it's, it starts from within first. Um, and then we as the, the coaching staff, we do our part. Come, um, it's again. Well, good season, regular season didn't end the way it should, but yeah. Waterhouse, I'm pretty sure, will be back next season. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely will be back. And, and we, we thank, once we thank all of our supporters uh, from Waterhouse, from all over the island, from all, all over the, 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 the world. Uh, thank you for the support. And we, we, are very, we, are, we, are, we are very sorry for not bringing on the trophy this year. I look forward to next season. Okay, let's see what that brings. Yeah, Coach, man, the bender. Disappointing, but I guess, like he said, very difficult for them to be able to, to, to lift the boys. Uh, certainly no problems for you in getting your players up for this third place playoff. I guess the younger they are, the easier it is to motivate them. They put on a very good display today, you'd say. Yeah, most definitely. A, a great display by my team this evening, you know. As I said, it, it, it wasn't hard to motivate them to play. They wanted to play. And they just came and gave a good performance this evening. I have to make mention of King. He was second in our man of the match rating. Really had a good performance. I don't think he lost a duel out there. Most definitely. Uh, I mean, he came today and said, Coach, you know, um, we wanted to do this for, for Mr. Speed. He's not here. He's off the island. And all the guys came and said, Coach, I wanted to do it for Mr. Speed this evening. You know? And I, King had a, a pretty good game. So any celebrations plans for later? Uh, we're just going to sit and, and watch the final, you know, um, it's just one of those days, you know. Okay, well, thank you very much and may we continue to see your team continue to treat us come next season. Thanks a lot. All right. Everybody in Scarlet there with the final words for Cavalier. Really loving how they finished the season in this third place playoff. Cavalier with a 4-1 victory over Waterhouse. They lift the third place trophy. And Dwayne Atkinson finishing the season with a brace to end the season with eight goals overall. As we see there, Cavalier 4, Waterhouse 1, the Jamaica Premier League powered by Digicel. Pleasant viewing.